What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, while we were streaming on Twitch, the chat wanted to see a Phalanx deck. So, we challenged ourselves to create the best Phalanx list that we could. I think Phalanx's true home is an expanded format where you have access to Mew from Fates Collide as well as Skyfield, allowing you to have up to eight Pokemon on your bench. Let's take a look at the list. Phalanx's true potential really gets untapped here in expanded format because of Skyfield. Skyfield makes it so that each player can have up to eight Pokemon on their bench. Now, typically, in order to use team attack, you would have to have a Phalanx in the active position announcing team attack, and it does 30 damage for each of your bench Pokemon that has Phalanx in its name. So with Skyfield, you could have seven Phalanx on your bench since you have one in the active position dealing 210 damage. But if you attack with Mew using the Memories of Dawn ability, which allows you to use any of the attacks of any of your basic Pokemon in play. You can have eight Phalanx on your bench, meaning you could deal 240 damage with Mew. And then when you add the Muscle Band into the equation, you can hit 260 damage with your Mew, which is absolutely huge. Now, there are some checks to Skyfield decks. Uh, Skyfield's very popular stadium in expanded format. Most notably, the Pseudo Wudo with the Roadblock ability can be really troublesome to have to play around so we do have the power of alchemy muck in the deck which makes it so that each basic pokemon in play has no abilities so it could be very disruptive at the end of the game you could definitely use it to stop your opponent from using sh setup with shaman or day day change and things like that so it could be very powerful for that but it also turns off pseudo wudo's roadblock ability so if you set up your alolan muck you're free to put as many phalanx on your bench as you would like, so long as you have a Skyfield in play. Now, even though it is relatively difficult to get all of your Phalanx on your bench, you still hit pretty good numbers for knocking out Shaman EXs into Dene GXs without a full bench of Phalanx. So to really take advantage of that, we've got the Great Catcher Target Whistle combo in the deck. Target Whistle allows you to put a basic Pokemon from your opponent's discard pile onto their bench, which is really good if you happen to maybe Colrus for a big hand, find Great Catcher, Great Catcher up a Dedenne, knock it out with team attack since Dedenne is weak to fighting. Then it goes to the discard pile the next turn. You could target Whistle, Dowsing Machine for the Great Catcher and do it again. So you can take four prizes very easily on the likes of Shaman EX, Dedenne GX, and so on and so forth. And the deck does set up very explosively i have to say it is super super low maintenance getting these pokemon into play with three copies of nest ball three copies of quick ball three copies of repeat ball my favorite card in the deck and three copies of ultra ball before we put the alola muck into the list i had four nest ball four quick ball and four repeat ball but decided that alola muck would be a good addition to the deck just to give us an option to play around pseudo wudo so we had to add three ultra balls into the deck as well which is enough search to get your alola muck into play now the repeat ball is probably my favorite card in the deck it's so cool from primal clash didn't really see a ton of mainstream play but i think it fits perfectly in into this Phalanx deck. It allows you to search your deck for a Pokemon with the same name as one of your Pokemon in play, reveal it and put it into your hand. So you can nest ball and get a Phalanx onto your bench, free search, amazing, more free search. You get to repeat ball and get another one. So I definitely love that. And the nest ball repeat ball combo really allows you to flood your bench with Phalanx and Phalanx V very quickly. So I definitely love them for that. And then we have the four Skyfield in the deck. We get to take advantage of twin energy in here as well we've got two twin energy four double colorless energy and a special charge so no problems hitting our energy but we also have teammates in the deck to get us any two cards from our deck if one of our pokemon was knocked out during the last turn and i feel like that happens quite a bit now you do have a wide array of a specs you could play in this deck but i like dowsing machine since you can reuse the field blower you could reuse the target whistle reuse the great catcher any of those things could be very valuable to reuse in various matchups, but you could also play Computer Search for consistency. Also, Life Dew is in consideration, but I really like the Dowsing Machine with the Great Catcher Target Whistle combo. It allows you to be very aggressive and take out key Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field. So this, in my opinion, is the best way to play Phalanx. Let's check it out in some gameplay. Now, this deck, I feel like, really enjoys going second in Expanded since we have the ability to launch turn one attacks pretty easily 
and our attacks don't do the most amount of damage. So getting the first attack is really meaningful if our opponent happens to put a Shaman or a Dedenny down on the bench, which happens all the time in expanded format. We could definitely take advantage of that as well. So you got, we got a pretty good opening hand here with Quick Ball and Ultra Ball. The Versus Seekers are a little bit dead here, but that's okay. Looks like my opponent might be playing a Dark Box deck or a Turbo Dark deck that features Marshadow. So we'll see, judging by the Dark type deck box, I'm thinking it is definitely Turbo Dark. So this is one of the reasons why Phalanx is really good in Expanded since Turbo Dark is one of the best Expanded archetypes and we get to hit that deck for weakness, which is really nice. And I do like that. We also have a little bit of a stronger board state than a deck, say, like Night March, which relies on Joltics that only have 30 HP. All of our Phalanx have 90 HP. And then with the Phalanx V ability, it actually bolsters that HP a little bit, giving them that nice barrier for each of your Phalanx in play. So I haven't found that coming into play a ton uh, in my game so far, the Phalanx V's ability. We also played the Muck, which can turn it off, but that's okay. This deck is meant to just use team attack and hit hard, be aggressive, and I think we're going to be able to see this deck doing just that, especially with this nice opening hand. We can see they've already got Shaman and multiple GX on their side of the field with Marshadow GX in the active. I could certainly get a turn one knockout on Marshadow GX, even if it's got 190 HP. In fact, I could take a turn one knockout on my opponent's Greninja and Zorark GX as well. And it's pretty bold of them to put a tag team Pokemon onto the bench, especially since uh, my team attack, you know, it can be used for one energy and it does hit for weakness. So they might not think that maybe I have much access to the bench there, but if I'm able to find my great catcher on the first turn of the game, we're going to have a pretty substantial turn one getting to target down whatever we want and then of course we play the target whistles and so on and so forth so we can just knock out that greninja and zark twice and it's game over now i really love drawing into the repeat ball there so we're gonna go get ourselves another phalanx we've got three in the deck four phalanx v great catcher is in the deck so that's cool now since we have kind of a weird hand here we'll use the muscle band that's fine i can Quick ball away the float stone. I don't necessarily need that. Get ourselves a shaman and then just ultra ball away these versus seekers to get ourselves a little bit more of an explosive start. So I'm going to get that phalanx and then we're just going to set up for six looking for a supporter card or another quick ball or ultra ball to get ourselves another shaman to set up further. So we did hit the sky field, which is good. We got the twin energy too. So we're going to go on to the Phalanx there, Nest Ball, get ourselves a Phalanx V, and then we've got another Shaman. We can go and probably discard the Versus Seeker's tough. I mean, that's certainly very useful for us, but the Rescue Stretcher is probably better in the long run. So we're just going to get this and set up for another five cards, looking for a Supporter to play. Colrus would be insane. Juniper is good as well, and as you can see, we've got the repeat ball which is excellent we can get ourselves another phalanx v and you can see how quickly this deck sets up with all of our very aggressive draw so i'm loving that we've got what four phalanx on the bench five now with uh another phalanx v coming into play so we love that and I get to take a big knockout on this Marshadow. And the cool thing is, my opponent gets rid of my Skyfield. I can just bump both of these Shamans. And we are hitting for weakness against all of these Dark-type Pokemon. We've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, plus, yeah, the Field Blower. And we get it. Excellent. So we'll Field Blower that Fighting Fury Belt. And then we get the Team Attack for Knockout on the Marshadow GX. Dealing 170 damage there, turn one. Like I said, uh, we don't necessarily always hit like the biggest one hit KO numbers, but uh, Phalanx hits hard, it hits fast, and it two hit KOs uh, all of the tag team Pokemon GX, which is really strong, and it does hit some very key Pokemon for one hit knockouts, you know, including everything in the Turbo Tark deck, which is just amazing, and then also Snorlax V Max, you know, Pokemon like that. So we do have. A very nice typing for this deck. So we definitely 
enjoy that fighting typing. You know, one hit KOing to Denny's easily, Shaman's easily is also very nice for this deck. So we'll see what my opponent decides to do at this point. Uh, you know, us being the non-GX deck, they're going to have a hard time kind of responding to uh, what we got. In fact, Dark Cleave not even taking the knockout on our Phalanx, only dealing 70 damage there. Phalanx V's Iron Defense Formation coming in clutch, which is just amazing. So we've got uh, another team attack for knockout here. We're just going to end. I actually like all of these resources, so that's fine. We've got seven Pokemon on the bench. I can get myself another. Uh, that's totally fine. Just to thin the deck, and then we're going to end. And I could, at that point, have, you know, Dowsing Machine, Field Blower, my own Sky Field, and decrease, uh, you know, my liabilities on the bench, getting rid of those. But uh, that's fine. We're just going to put another energy here. Team Attack for one hit KO on the Dark Ride, doing 400 damage. Didn't even need weakness there. We are just hitting for gigantic numbers with our Phalanx. And now we've got teammates. I love this card in the deck as well because it just guarantees certain uh, certain cards. So we can teammates for Great Catcher. That's something that I love to do with this deck. If you don't have the energy you need, you just play teammates when one of your Pokemon was knocked out last turn. Go get the Great Catcher. Bring up Shaman, Darkrai, whatever you need. And you can just team attack for Knockout, which is super nice. So we're going to see if they have anything here. They have Laser, they've got Greninja and Zork in the active, but it just seems pretty rough for them at this point. And they have gotten enough energy into play relatively quickly. It just so happens that Phalanx is just such a tough matchup, I think, for Turbo Darks. Definitely one of the biggest selling points for this archetype that uh, you have kind of a walk in the park here against one of the most popular decks in expanded format it can also go toe to toe with ultra necrozma which is really popular too since a lot of the times against ultra necrozma you can get that first attack launched and then just put the pressure on and your opponent to low you do unfortunately usually have a phalanx v on your bench which can be a liability against ultra necrozma decks as they can kind of finish it off with the guzma if they're able to get that at the end of the game but we also do play four sky fields which can make it tough for the ultra necrozma deck to be able to chain their attacks back to back since we're always going to be countering their stadium we've got field blower as well to get rid of garbodor's tool and and feel like you can actually compete with that deck which is pretty nice. You can compete with decks like Night March as well, since you only need to deal 30 damage to knock out Joltix. And then, you know, you've got the great catchers and the target whistle stuff to be able to target down your opponent's, uh, you know, Shamans, which Night March is very reliant on Shaman. This deck, you can see, it's very easy for us to clear the Shamans off of our field. And here, uh, I don't think I have knockout. Let's see. 3, 6, 9, 12, 12, we're doing 240, I mean, but we could just teammates for uh, either the cards we need to take the knockout on the active, or we'll just go get Great Catcher, which is cool, and we can do that to take a knockout on any of those bench Pokemon, so we will gladly just use that Great Catcher, bring up the Darkrai, and we get to team attack for game here uh, against Turbo Dark, so Phalanx doing its thing the list is smooth and uh i think it's uh definitely takes a good matchup against turbo dark now in this game it looks like we are going to get to go second again which is awesome we start with our alolan grimer that's cool alolan grimer get in there and collect for free which is nice so even if you can't move it out of the active position on the first turn you could still call collect draw two cards and have a pretty decent start now it looks like we're playing against some sort of maybe adp deck or something like that there are definitely double dragon energies in my opponent's deck it might be also tina with uh you know with galarian zigzagoons that might be what we see uh but unfortunately my opponent does not have the best opening hands there so we are going to start with quick ball get the n into the discard pile that's fine and we're going to go get phalanx and then we can repeat ball and go get ourselves another one, which seems really good. And now that we've got two of those outs into play, uh, we can go with the twin energy. You definitely want to attach the twin energy since it is, you know, double colors you can attach to your Phalanx V in order to retreat. And then we're just going to end ourselves here 
With the uh, Skyfield, I feel like it's fine to play, and we do have four of those and a dowsing machine. So we're just going to thin the deck and then in to get ourselves a pretty substantial start. So unfortunately, we have not found that floatstone yet. So we do have this, though, and I can Ultra Ball away maybe the Double Colorless and the Juniper, and that way we can go get a Shaman to dig for the switch or the floatstone that are in our deck. There are two floatstones in the deck, so that's fine. We can special charge, put the energy back into the deck, and we get to set up for five with another Ultra Ball in our hand. So pretty decent odds of being able to find one, I think. Sure enough, we've got the switch right there and another repeat ball. So we'll repeat ball, get ourselves another Phalanx. And then with the switch, we've got the turn one attack team attack there for 90 damage enough to take that knockout and we do have Lolan Grimer on our bench as well as Skyfield and an Ultra Ball so we're stoked about that we're gonna get to see what kind of deck my opponent is running sure enough here is Arceus Dalga and Palkia with the Zigzagoons so we do have to worry about maybe an Altered Creation GX and then sometimes I've seen like Altered Creation GX and then they scoop the ADP out of the way which is certainly a little bit frustrating for us to deal with as well because uh, they can, you know, basically have their cake and eat it too. They're going to be taking bonus prizes. They're going to be dealing extra damage, but they don't have that liability. It is the Arceus Dalgapalki. I've seen ADPs with double dragon energies played with super scoop buffs, played with scoop up cyclone, all sorts of crazy stuff to get that ADP out of harm's way. Now it looks like my opponent is potentially digging for a energy they're getting rid of special charge yeah they don't really care about that at this point they're just trying to find that energy for that altered creation gx and they play a lot of zigzagoons it appears so that is interesting not something that uh, i feel like i've ever seen before but with the shaman over there i've got the great catcher in my hand we could potentially get enough pokemon into play so that i can gust up the shaman knock it out uh then maybe yeah, and sure enough, super scoop up, see, right? So that's the dangerous thing about hitting into uh, the Arceus Dalgapalkia. If if I do, my opponent probably is running four super scoop ups in this deck, and they could save that Arceus Dalga and Palkia from taking any knockouts, right? Now, they've got the Scorched Earth, so they could draw additional cards here, uh, potentially, but they did dig for the Double Dragon Energy, so we'll see if they hit... Double Dragon, they got a Fighting Into the Discard Pile, Scorched Earth, Energy Lotto, and there it is. They do have that KO. That's not that KO, but that uh, GX attack. That's big. We'll see what they tag call for here. Just another Tina Chomp's fine. So they got the Alter Creation GX. My question is, there's another Scoop Up Net. They're going to set up more. Okay. Question is, do I risk it? and hit into this Arceus Dalgo and Palkia. They got two super scoop ups down. Odds are they have another one in the deck. Do we take this chance? Uh, I mean, it is a nice route to be able to win for sure. If we knock out the ADP, then all I have to do is knock out the Shaman and it's game over. Um, they can win, theoretically, if they like gust up Shaman, gust up Phalanx, they could just win the game that way. So... We're definitely under pressure at this point to kind of figure out a win condition for ourselves. So let's see let's see what we can find out here, though. I think I like keeping the Great Catcher, but I feel like we just have to get rid of it. And I could always Dowsing Machine for it back. We're going to set up one more time. Muscle Band on the active seems okay. Double colorless over here, and we're just going to set up for six. Let's see what cards we got. We've got Guzma, we've got Colrus, Floatstone. Floatstone can definitely go here. And then, let's see, I'm doing three, six, nine, 12, 9, 11. So we're not doing enough to knock out the Shaman because of the fighting resistance. We would need one more Pokemon. So I think we just are best off. Hitting into this Arceus Dalgapalkia, hoping that there's no scoop up action going on. And we can definitely really, really kind of enhance our, our bench as well. Let's see. I mean, I could field blower. Let's see, put this down, put this down, 
and then I could field blower my own sky field, get rid of Shaman, Shaman, and Grimer. And that way I kind of have the best case scenario, I think, for my own board state. So that certainly makes my board a little bit stronger than it would be otherwise. We're gonna get rid of that muscle band too. Um, I feel like I'd rather get rid of the float stone and get rid of that easy pivot. And we're gonna get rid of our own Shaman, Shaman, and Grimer. I don't wanna turn off my ability. I feel like that'd be very good. And then we're just gonna team attack here, dealing uh, 170 damage. So a nice two hit KO. And then all I have to do is finish off that Shaman for game. So I'm on a two turn win clock, so long as they don't scoop the ADP, which would be pretty tough for us to deal with. But I do like our ability to field blower our own sky field, get all those liabilities off the bench, muck. Not going to be very effective in this game, I don't feel like, even though my opponent can deal bonus damage, damage with Headbutt Tantrum. I think that, uh, you know, by and large, we just want to keep our our board looking like this with just, you know, Phalanx boys all over the place. Now, it looks like they are going to Ultimate Ray here. Uh, they can take two prizes, but they can only take three prizes on Phalanx B. So we are in route to be able to potentially win this game so long as this shaman doesn't get scooped up out of harm's way uh, i am wondering if maybe it would be stronger to potentially you know gust the shaman because there's a lower chance uh you know they play the scoop up nets and they're only down one scoop up net so there is a chance that i have to um you know i have to deal with that so we do have the Guzma. Let's see, I've got no teammates in the discard pile. Let's take a look at the deck real quick. Got another Phalanx V. Teammates is in there. All our energy is in there as well. Now, this hand is pretty loaded, so we can just kind of thin our deck like that. And then that's fine. Then we can just Colrus for 10. And we'll probably find the energy that we need. I don't think it's time to, yeah, do anything else. So we're just going to Colrus, go for the knockout on the Arceus Dago Palkia and hope that there is some liability to be able to hit into here for, you know, our final two prizes. Now, even if they put something into the discard pile, uh, we could take that up with our target whistle as well. So that is not out of the question for us if they do that let's see what they do with the tina chomp they could do calamitous slash 160 damage plus the increased damage from the adp alter creation gx i'm just looking for this shaman for game now we could play uh you know like diancy in this deck i feel like we don't really need diancy in here since you're usually just going to want to have a board full of phalanx like this, and then you could skyfield and put like a couple more phalanx out. But Diancy is not super, super needed. Uh, I think that, you know, I kind of have the muck in here as that spot instead. Uh, the list is pretty tight since we do need a ton of ball search cards to be able to get our board set up the way that we need to early on. Because if we don't just spread the field with Phalanx early, then we're not going to be doing what we need to do with this deck in order to win. So let's see. They've got this. They did not scoop up the Shaman and keep it out of harm's way. So I'm thinking that we are just going to be fine here. If they had just scooped up that Shaman and done nothing else, well, I could have target whistled that Shaman. So we actually had game no matter what. So long as Target Whistle is in my deck, I've got Great Catcher in the discard pile, so plenty of options there to be able to finish off the game. Let's just take a look at our deck real quick and see what resources are left. Yeah, we do have the Target Whistle in there, so we could have finished the game with that. So all I have to do is teammates find myself the energy that I need, and then we've already got a Phalanx to put onto the bench, so we're just going to grab that. And then we bench that. So we go here, dowsing machine for the great catcher, great catcher, bring up shaman, and phalanx takes the win. Busted deck. So excellent team attack. Well played to my opponents. Lots of fun there. And a very unique and cool deck that you've got over on your side of the table as well. And that's the phalanx deck. It's a ton of fun. 
definitely recommend giving it a try here in expanded formats. I think that if you are a fan of Phalanx, expanded format is the best format to play it in. It's the most consistent and you have the highest damage output with the deck. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, sub to the channel. Do you know that only like half of the viewers sub to the channel? Please sub to the channel. We are looking to try and get 60,000 subs one day. That'd be insane. So if you're watching and you like the channel and you like what I do, just uh, go ahead and drop us a sub here on YouTube. Also, make sure to check out the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash tricky gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content for like four or five hours every single weekday. We've got a great community over there. It's a ton of fun. Definitely recommend that as well. If you're looking for all of the best trading card game singles, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, make sure to check out fullgripcodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. Also, Full Grip Games is always buying bulk singles, things like that. Make sure to check out the buy list in the description below if you're looking to get some cash for your cards. And that's it. Y'all have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.